there has been a lot of speculation over the past couple months and even really years about Conor McGregor's alleged drug abuse. And there's been a lot of kind of quirky Conor McGregor moments over the past couple years and mainly over the past week or so during this media tour for Roadhouse. But today in an interview with Conor McGregor dropped on Sports Illustrated, and I am not exaggerating, I am not clickbaiting when I say this was the most disastrous, damning, disturbing Conor McGregor interview I've ever seen. I don't know how Conor McGregor let this interview get out. I don't know how Jake Gyllenhaal let this get out because Jake Gyllenhaal sitting back in his chair looking over at Conor. Like, oh God, please don't let him talk. Let's get through this. Conor McGregor probably only talked for about 30 seconds in a three minute interview. And we're going to take a look at the majority of it in this video. He clearly needs help. He's clearly abusing something or maybe coming off of something. But at this point, I can confidently say that I personally believe Conor McGregor is abusing some sort of drug and it's not alcohol. I'm not talking about alcohol. We've obviously seen him. He's go out getting drunk constantly and there's talks of a fight. And I've speculated in the past, the UFC's icing him out because of contract reasons. But also I've discussed, they probably are looking at Conor McGregor's drug test every time they test him. And they're like, you know what? This guy isn't fit to be back for a promotional tour for one of the biggest fights ever in UFC history, especially not UFC 300. And I know there's some people who say, oh, well, the UFC's drug testing him. We'd know. That is completely false. I broke it down in a video from yesterday. We'll talk about it a little bit in this video, but let's start right away. Let's look at a couple different clips. There's a couple different clips we're going to look at before the interview because he's kind of had a few bizarre moments over the past week or so. All these clips are, are fairly recent. I think, well, we're not even going to look at a clip. We're going to look like a, at a picture of kind of a video that some of you have already seen in a second, but all these are kind of damning, but... If these are like a 5 out of 10, this new interview is a 10 out of 10 in terms of, okay, he definitely needs help. He's definitely abusing something. Let's take a look at this first clip. I've seen this clip circulating around. It's not that damning because there is a lot going on, but this was definitely weird. And a lot of people speculated on this. Oh man, Connor's coked up. That's what I heard a lot of people say. Look at the way he kind of enters this interview. He's doing weird things with his collar. He's looking around weird. He's licking his lips weird. But again, this by itself, it looks weird, but you can kind of write this off a little bit. Let's check it out. Connor, I'm Claire Gallagher with The Daily Texan. Um, what can you tell us about your acting debut? Obviously, it's your first experience. Hard work, hard work, but you know, we got it doing. It's in the bank for life. So there you go. In the beginning, he's touching all over his face. He's playing with his collar, whatnot. A little bizarre, but that by itself, you can kind of write it off. Oh, Connor's just... You know, it's overly excited, whatever. People touch their face. He's nervous, maybe. I don't think that he's nervous. But okay, fair enough. We can write that one off. Now, this next clip is from an ESPN MMA interview. I will link everything that I show in this video down below in the description in case you want to go check it out in its entirety. And I showed this clip in a previous video. This is a seven-second clip, eight-second clip, where Connor's is doing an interview. I do not understand a single word that Connor McGregor says here. Listen to this. Kicks that from... from I won't, it's, it's, there's a lot of, there's, there's action on the yachts and I, I, man, uh, so I was on, the, I was at on sea as well. Does anybody understand a single word that he just said? All I understood was on sea as well. I, I have no idea what he just said outside of that. Absolutely no idea. Now this next clip, we have an interview that he did on, I guess a red carpet or whatever. And he's kind of flirting with the girl who's interviewing him. And look what he does mid interview. I've jumped ahead. This is like a minute into the interview. Watch how weird and sketchy he acts here. Watch this. It is a mega event and happy days. Tell me, uh, what does it mean to you to be part of this film? Why is it, why the collar? <laughs> you like the collar? Yeah. yeah, I'm just pulling it back out. Yeah, oh, okay. I got the things. No, oh, I know, with the ruffles. Yes, I no, like it. Yeah, I, I just thought it was a different. Uh, I mean, that's just bizarre. I pointed that out earlier this week. The completely bizarre. Completely bizarre. Again, it by itself, can you say, oh, well, he's just nervous or there's a lot going on or he's worried about the way he looks, whatever it may be. You can kind of write that off. And there's been some people saying, look, this is just a pure rumor. Conor McGregor, you know, he's he's a celebrity. He's so popular. People are just latching onto his name and saying certain things about him. And I've been this entire time in my personal belief with everything that you can just compound on top of each other, these kind of weird clips that you see, the voice notes. He's clearly abusing something more than just alcohol, which, 
You know, he's probably abusing alcohol as well, the way he's talking constantly about partying for St. Patty's Day. Now, this next one, I'm not even going to actually show the clip. You guys have all seen this for sure. You guys have all seen this for sure. This is Conor McGregor at a boxing match in Saudi Arabia. And the way he's like shouting to somebody else across Ronaldo, Ronaldo's completely disgusted. Now, this is from TNT Sport. In the past, when I've showed very small clips from them, I end up getting a copyright, so I'm not going to show the clip, but I'm sure you guys have seen this video where Ronaldo, and you can see it in this still right here. Ronaldo is completely put off. What's going on here? Connor's a weirdo. Connor's acting strange. He's shouting at the top of his lungs. He's getting two inches from my face. He gets closer than this still. So there's that as well. But you get to the Sports Illustrated interview, and you can just see right off jump. Look at Connor. This is this is Connor during an interview. Right off jump, you can already tell, okay, it's a little bit bizarre. Now, I want to warn you, before we actually start playing the interview, the audio is a little bit tweaked. I've tweaked the audio just a hair because in this video, they're playing background music and the music can cause a copyright. So I've tweaked this audio very slightly so the voices sound just a hair different because I had to remove that audio completely. I had to run a software to remove it. And it sounds a hair different. When I've compared them side by side, it's just a little bit different. It's not that big of a deal. We're not really listening too much. We're really listening to the way he talks in general, but we're also listening or looking at his body language and the way he acts and he's just tweaking all over the place. It's crazy. I could not believe that this interview got out. They may eventually take it down. Amazon may pay to take it down. Connor may pay to take it down. They may contact them to take it down. But if you want to see the original, I've edited this and then re-uploaded it for this video. If you want to see the original, it is linked down in the description. And what they're saying, the substance of what they're saying isn't all that important. But just wait until Connor McGregor has his opportunity to talk. And at the end of this interview, which was about three minutes long, the last few sentences that Connor McGregor struggled to put together was actually hard to watch to be quite honest let's let's get right into it great fun i mean he he was from the very and by the way the beginning of this is going to be jake gyllenhaal talking but just look at conor mcgregor the way he's kind of acting he starts tweaking a little bit and like shrugging and and blinking rapidly it's crazy and, and already he's got his mouth wide open playing with his tongue but okay okay we can write that off watch this this is crazy in the beginning conor said to me he was like i'm a white belt and making movies and acting and i'm here to learn and that was the way it was the whole time. But on the opposite end, I'm, you know, a white belt in the fight game. And in terms of fights and what they look like and how authentic it is, I know it was so important. Right after this little preview is where it really starts to get bad. But if you saw Roadhouse, let me know how you felt about it down in the comments. Let me know. But start to watch Connor here. This is where it gets really bad. To you from the very beginning that the, that the fight fans always felt like they were watching something original, something fun. And so he was always coaching me and showing me how to do stuff do things or change something up are you guys seeing this and it gets worse when he starts talking it actually literally gets worse i could not believe it to make it feel more authentic so that so that all the fight fans in particular but movie fans in the end too will love this movie even more because of the stuff that we did connor what did jake bring to the table from the realism when it came to the fight game jake's a consummate professional 75 movies made you know I, i'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. Look look at Jake Gyllenhaal's face. He's disgusted. He's like, oh, God, please get through this interview. It's only going to be three minutes long. He's looking over at Connor. I, I literally, when I was watching this, I was like, okay, because people were saying, check out this clip, check out this. I'm like, it's probably over-exaggerated, like everything. I could not, but let's actually just rewind that hair. Let's rewind that hair. Watch the way he talks, too. He's, like, slurring over his words. He's having trouble stringing sentences together. Jake Gyllenhaal's completely disgusted, by the way. Consummate professional. 75 movies made. You know, I would, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. He was patient with me. He gave me guidance. And I just took it. You know, we had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. I have 75 bar fights made, and that's it. We had a good back and forth. I know I'm sitting here going like this and shrugging and stuff, kind of almost poking fun at it. This is disturbing, and it gets worse. It gets worse. Conor McGregor needs help. He needs help. He's, he's you know, he's so rich. He's probably surrounded by yes men. He doesn't want to listen to anyone. He wants to get back in the cage as well. He's fighting with the UFC. He's talked about basically or alluded to he's struggling mentally to get back in the cage. He wants to get back in the cage and get focused. 
He thinks it's going to fix his life. I honestly believe this is a great comparison here. You hear about couples who are in a failing marriage deciding to have a kid to kind of try to save their marriage. And that, that never works. That's never going to work. You're going to end up getting divorced anyway. That has nothing to do with Connor. I think Connor's in a bad spot in his life with alcohol abuse, drug use. And I think he thinks getting back in the cage, getting a fight is going to get him out of that rut. And it gets worse. Let, watch the rest of this. There's like another minute and a half of this. By the way, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. I would greatly, I would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Because recently I felt like I'm Michael Chandler. I'm I'm kind of role-playing Michael Chandler. I'm, you know, I got one dude on my mind. I'm scouring the internet, watching clips of Conor McGregor, looking for him lifting heavy, heavy weights. At this point, you guys have to subscribe to the channel. I've been torturing myself doing this. Subscribe to the channel, like the video as well, share the video because this is craziness. Jake, uh, you, you have to take some real punches and kicks in the, the lead up to this? Uh, yeah, and throughout it too. Yeah, it's inevitable, I think, when you're trying to do fights like this and make them as real as you can. That's just sort of, it's a part of the whole thing, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, also it's important to, to know what it feels like in the spar. I did that particularly in preparation for Southpaw. There was a lot of sparring and understanding the feeling. You can't play a fighter unless you know what that's like uh uh but no we stayed we stayed as careful as we could the whole time and he was always very he was good to me and so th this isn't that bad this isn't that bad he's just kind of nodding the lawn looking a little bit weird wait until he opens up his mouth again <laughs> i sometimes had to remind him <laughs> I, la I landed one punch once and, and he hit me with a door <laughs> other than that it was absolutely perfect that's yeah, true an amazing stunt a stunt team gareth warden and steve brown and they were phenomenal with us. They gave us free reign, and we've done a good job. Is that hard for you, Connor, at all? Because you've been in so many real fights to, to realize, yeah, I'm trying to make this look real, but, you know, I am acting. For me, what was hard was it was time-consuming. 18 hours on set, very little rest. It was strange to me, but, you know, the fight scenes, I was happy to give my input and my all. And Jake, as I said, is a consummate professional. We've done a good job. That that is craziness. He can't. He's not. He's having trouble stringing sentences together. I know people can say, "Oh, well, he's tired." Being tired doesn't make you do this. Yeah, yeah. I I, I love working with Jake, and he's a professional. And this is sad to see, man. I, I said it many many years ago. The thirty for thirty on Conor McGregor one day is going to be a sight to behold. And I talked about this the other day, and literally in my last video. We have to appreciate these guys when they're in that special moment in time, when they are the elite of the elite. Because look what Conor McGregor has now become. It's, I mean, seriously, God, listen to this shit. I, I can't believe this. I can't believe it's as bad as it looks. L watch this again. Look at the way he's struggling to string his sentence together, and Jake Gyllenhaal has got that look. Look at Jake Gyllenhaal. He is just laser focused right now. Like, please, Connor, get through this interview. It's only three minutes long. This interview was only three minutes long. By the way, if you see a couple little jump cuts, I cut out a few seconds where it was dead quiet and there was music playing in the background. So I didn't want it to get a copyright. So the jump cuts are me. It's not the original video. I will link the original video down in the description. But let's watch this back one more time. Very little rest. It was strange to me, but, you know, the fight scenes, I was happy to give my input and my all. And Jake, as I said, is a consummate professional. We've done a good job. I mean, I, I don't know what more to say. I know there's going to be some people maybe saying that this isn't a big deal. I know there's going to be some people saying, oh, he's just tired or whatever. This is incredibly damning. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing for Connor. This is embarrassing for his family. This is embarrassing for Amazon. This is embarrassing for the UFC. And I talked about it in the video yesterday, but I'll say it again. There's some people saying Connor's being drug tested by the UFC. Even with USADA, there is in competition and out of competition testing. Now, how they define those windows, it could vary a little bit. I haven't seen clarification on the UFC, but in competition is typically right before the fight and right after the fight. So usually it could be like a week max or a couple days sometimes. So it could be two days before the fight, a day after the fight, or the night of the fight even. And then there's out of competition testing, recreational drugs, marijuana, cocaine, black tar, heroin, name whatever you want is not illegal out of competition. So when they're randomly drug testing you and you're not, you don't have a fight 
or it's not the night of the fight or the day before the fight, if you have marijuana in your system, it doesn't matter. If you have cocaine in your system, it doesn't matter. The only time it matters if you have it the night of the fight in competition. So if the UFC is getting drug tests back and there's cocaine in the system, they don't care. And also they're not going to reveal it anyway. They're not going to want to as character assassinate, you know, one of their biggest stars, but also this could be one of the reasons the UFC doesn't want to line Connor up for a fight. They might be telling him, look, you got to get straight. We're looking at these drug tests, man. You got Coke in your system and it's and that levels are unbelievable. What are you doing partying every single night? And he said, you know, he, he said in the aerial interview, I wish I had it up right now. Yeah. I love the, uh, proper 12 whiskey and uh he named another alcohol that he has and he says i i have a i love the i forgot exactly what he said but madness i have a thing for madness and i was like okay what's that code word for cocaine but this was an incredibly damning interview from conor mcgregor he definitely needs help i don't think at any in any way shape or form this is an exaggeration but you guys will have to let me know what you think down in the comments don't forget to subscribe to the channel don't forget to like the video hopefully connor gets the help he needs before he returns to the for the to the cage in in the ufc but i don't know if that's going to happen but i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching